You know, this, this next one's kind of fun. I always enjoy when we do the Hall of Fame, when we get down to an inductee from a sport that we don't have anymore. Did you guys know that Colorado had a gymnastics team at one point in time? Our next inductee, Jack Ryan Gymnastics from 1966 to 1968. As a senior in 1968, Jack led the Buffaloes to an 11-2 record and CU's first and only Big 8 championship as CU ended Iowa State's three-year run atop the conference. He also keyed the Buffs' highest ever finish sixth in the 1968 NCAA championships under coach Art White, where he was the individual NCAA champion in the pommel horse, CU's first ever and only, by the way, national gymnastics champion. He scored a 9.60 score for this event, the second highest posted in the entire championship that year, and did so by overwhelming significant hand and elbow injuries that he suffered earlier in his senior season. A three-year letterman, he was a two-time Big 8 conference champion in the side horse and would have been a three-timer had it not been for a missed routine that kept him from the title his senior year. CU's only dual meet team losses this senior season were to eventual NCAA champion Southern Illinois and the defending Big 8 champion Iowa State. He won his competitions on a pommel horse against both with near-perfect 9.60 scores. As a freshman and sophomore, he was the first, or he was first in the side horse in the National United States Gymnastic Federation Open Meets. And as a junior, he was also the NCAA regional champion in his specialty as well. Had the U.S. Olympic team not been at that time comprised of only all-around athletes and competitors, not specialists, he otherwise was likely to be a surefire Olympian. After a long career in various engineering management roles that involved five different companies in six different states, he and Tracy, his high school sweetheart and bride of 57 years, eventually retired to a small town just outside of Missoula, Montana. We're pleased to have him here tonight. From a sport we don't have anymore, he's now a Hall of Famer, Jack Ryan. Uh, <clears throat> before you start that clock, Rick, I got to ask a favor because this is not part of my speech. So can you hold that clock for a couple minutes? I, I need uh, audience participation here. I'm trying to figure out why I was next to last in the line. And at first I thought it was age because I'm certainly younger than Lee. <laughs> but I don't know about Richard. <laughs> so I decided that wasn't the case. Next, I decided to uh, look at maybe it was the major sports to the minor sports, even the ones that no longer exist. But there's a couple of minor sports sprinkle in there that kind of blew that theory. Finally, I decided that what they're doing is they're going from the ugliest to the prettiest. <laughs> I So you agree with me. Thank you. Uh, I, after seeing some of those football players, I don't want to meet them afterwards. So <laughs> I'd like to express my thanks to uh, uh, school for this honor, especially to Rick, who <clears throat> I almost didn't answer the phone. I thought he was going to sell me some car insurance. <laughs> and uh, to Kimberly for all the work that she did uh, to get me down here and a lot of my family that was able to join me, so I, I appreciate that. But I need to take this honor and divide it into three parts. And let me explain. First of all, you've seen the accomplishments that I achieved, and that was a sum of nine years of almost round the clock, uh, 12 months a year. I know in high school, I had a pommel horse in my garage during the summer and we'd work out every year through the, through the uh, off season. It wasn't, it wasn't a uh, three month sport. <clears throat> um, and it finally uh, uh, culminated when I won the NCAA championships my senior year, the very last meet, the last time I touched a pommel horse, as a matter of fact, uh, due to all the injuries, I don't know if, <laughs> which uh, doctor gave me the cortisone shots in my uh, elbows, but that's the only thing that got me through. But 
uh, all the regional and conference uh, championships and the time, it was just an accumulation of the effort that I put in and put into life after I left the college because it, it takes effort, it takes dedication to do that. The second area that I'd like to give this honor to goes to my teammates and my coach. Uh, one of the coaches that didn't get mentioned here tonight is Art White, His, who was my coach back in 1967, 68, and I thank you, Art, for... <laughs> he traveled here from uh, Ohio, and uh, I just appreciated that. But. He, he came in my junior year and he took a team that was taking third and fourth in the Big Eights. Nebraska, Oklahoma, uh, Iowa State were the powerhouses at that time in gymnastics. And within two years, we became the, Nash, or the uh, Big Eight champion, which allowed us to go to the Nationals as a team. And that was the difference my senior year. Every year before that, I went as an individual. I qualified through regionals, but my senior year, my team was there and they were depending on my score in order to take sixth place in the nation that year. And that made a big difference. And you don't think of gymnastics as a uh, team sport, but all of you that participate in uh, those individual sports know that the team makes a big difference. So I'm uh, thankful for that. <clears throat> And the third area I wanted to bring this honor to was for the many gymnasts that were in this uh, region in the 60s and the 70s. There were over a dozen high schools along the front range that had gymnastic teams that fed the colleges. There were four or five colleges and universities that had teams along the front range, along with the Air Force Academy. And so this was a hotbed for gymnastics back in the 60s and 70s. And so I accept this honor on behalf of those gymnasts, some of which were my teammates, but a lot of which were my competitors. And it was, it's a sport that I love and, and continue to love. Uh, I'm glad I'm not competing today based on what I see on the TV. <laughs> in conclusion, yeah, I'm almost in my two minutes, or five minutes. I need to mention two more people that uh, were instrumental in my success. Uh, first of all, I want to honor my strongest supporter, uh, <clears throat> who was with me and has been with me for 57 years. You didn't notice, but at the end of that uh, video of my routine, that was her head that jumped up <laughs> and blocked the screen. Yes. That was held at Arizona, University of Arizona, and her and some other uh, supporters drove all the way down there to support us during that time. But Tracy's been by my side when I graduated with two and a half kids. Uh, one of the half kids is here tonight. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was because of her support of what I was doing that allowed me to uh, continue to compete. Finally, I accept this award on behalf of my personal savior, savior Jesus. Uh, the Apostle Paul in Corinthians said, we all compete in games, exercising control in all things. And that's what gymnastics taught me, that's what my coach taught me, and that's what my Lord and Savior is teaching me about this. But he says, we all do it for a perishable reef. My fame came and went in about three and a half minutes when I stood on that podium. And until a call from Rick, it was in the past. But Paul goes on to say that we go after an imperishable reef, a reef that will not fade away. So uh, I give my Lord and Savior all the, all the uh, honor and all that happened to me. Thank you.